Tibet is on the other side of these mountains, and it's Tibetism that for the last thousand years has ordered the way of life for this whole area. My aim in coming here was to experience something of what it means to be a Buddhist monk. Anne McNeil is one out of a group of 20 Europeans who were staying at the monastery. In fact, the main purpose of the place is to provide teaching to people from the West. They run two six-week courses each year. The Tibetan monks teach them the basic Buddhist doctrines and above all, how to meditate. One thing that struck me was that this seemed to have given them a special sort of aliveness, as if they'd stumbled across a secret. They looked on every act of meditation as a voyage and seemed as intent on their exploration of inner space as any astronaut. I was nursing for four years, and after that I spent a year just doing all small things, you know, nothing important, and then we started travelling. The meditation course that happened to be starting just as we arrived here, I didn't know it was going to be about Buddhism, and it sounded interesting, so we stayed. And after the course then it seemed to all make sense. The retreat that I did afterwards was for three weeks, and means that you just live by yourself completely for those three weeks and meditate all day and constantly meditating your mind where well, you don't have any distractions with what's going on outside and your mind starts looking inside and you look back on your life and see what you've done and where it's taken you. For me it was very calming and peaceful and I felt that I was different and lived differently afterwards. The way to find the solution is given, but the actual solution you have to find yourself. I wasn't aware of religion at all until I sort of picked up a penguin Buddhism or something. I'd been to a sort of Buddhist society in London and I went to sort of lectures on Buddhism and Sufism and things around the place. I really had my mind blown, you know, far more than I ever anticipated on the, on the first meditation course. You know. It wasn't really till this trip that I became aware of people on such colossal difference of levels, you know, mm -hmm. just how fantastically wise and liberated people can be, you know, it's coming in touch with this and just more and more seems to open up and the, 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 the horizons are sort of beyond all comprehension. It's a magical mystery tour, you know, sort of going to, I won't know till I get there, you know. <laughs> Until about a year ago, I was practicing medicine. Somehow, I wasn't as convinced as most of the others that practicing medicine was the answer. I went to a religious school for 10 years, really? Presbyterian school. And we had assembly each morning with prayers and hymns and some religious instruction, but it was actually quite meaningless. It was never explained what it was about or why we were doing it. I've heard it said by some of the lamas who have spoken to people who have used LSD that the experiences they have are comparable to some experiences people have at high levels of meditation but when you're using a drug then you come down and also as I said you have no control over what's happening while you're under the effect whereas in meditation you can actually do what you like now that I understand a little about Buddhist philosophy and psychology nothing I was ever taught is uh, disproves Buddhist philosophy and that Buddhist philosophy can include everything I was ever taught and far much more before I came out east, I was at art college for a year in Farnham, but found it too restricting. I had a lot of time to myself, I had a room which I used to lock myself up in and spend a lot of time on my own. And just Buddhist books came my way. <laughs> I spent a month and a half in Kathmandu. Just one day by chance I happened to meet somebody who said there was a meditation course up at Kirpan. Really, that is what I came out east for to find some form of, of meditation and teachings. I was into pot, but I gave that up really when I left England. The thing that doesn't let me down is meditation. Really, at the moment, my meditation is a contemplation upon the teachings which I have received at Copan. Just going over the teachings and contemplating upon them so that I understand them. It's really just in the very basic form, just sitting down, closing your eyes and thinking about the Dharma. Very basically, the Dharma is the truth, the reason why all this exists. 
everything you see, everything you touch, everything you feel, everything you taste. What's the matter with the town I keep a drum circle? you 